Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought to yourself, I would be further along than I am today? Well, with us in studio is Sarah Paticha, author of West Point Woman. And we're gonna be talking today about emotional intelligence. Now, emotions impact our thinking, and our thinking impacts our behavior. Sarah, glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, so we're talking about emotional intelligence today. What, and you wrote the book. I'm sure there's some aspects of emotional intelligence in the book. Yes. Um, although this book is really uh, a series of stories about my experiences being one of the first women at West Point, um, it's really a story of resilience, which is mm -hmm. one component of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a chapter that's a humor chapter, right. but that is also an element you use in difficult situations to maintain your emotional state. So talk to me a little bit about the leader of tomorrow or the mm -hmm. 21st century leader. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we often look at top executives, we celebrate uh, the journey to uh, re achieving that you know, CEO title or the executive mm -hmm. title that uh, I've finally made it to the top. Right. And, and it's factored a lot on intelligence. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and so talk to me about what are the skills of the 21st century leader? Yes. Well, our world is much more complex. And there's a lot of disruptive technologies, obviously, that impact people as, as they're in the workforce. And therefore, um, executives in particular have to be very aware of how their emotions are impacting the people they hope to lead, the people they hope to inspire. And with the demographics that are changing, you need people that can quickly engage others and build trust. And that's really done through the emotional intelligence skill set. So talk to me a little bit about developing that. Um, if, if at first we need to know how to work on this skill set, how do you, what's the evidence that it even exists? Talk to me about when you have those healthy situ situations. Oh, okay. Well, there's a plethora of research out there. In fact, um, the training that I've developed is really based on the top leading people in the field. Um, and it's been around now, this concept of emotional intelligence for 40, 50 years. What we do know though, is as people move up in organizations, their ability to influence um, is increased because that's what they do most of the time. Um, I've coached a lot of executives and most of their time, 90% of the day is in meetings. Mm. And therefore their ability to manage their own emotions and read the emotions of those in an organization is really the key that drives them forward. And uh, I love a quote by Daniel Goleman, one of the chief architects of what we know about emotional intelligence. And he said, we hire CEOs for their intelligence and their competence. We fire them for their lack of emotional intelligence. Mm, that's interesting. So there's financial uh, benefits to getting this stuff right from a business aspect. Is mm -hmm. this hard to teach? No. But it is a different type of teaching. So some of the things that I've incorporated in my training is not is called emotional learning, which is different than cognitive learning. And that's really what we get in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the training that you have is all about knowledge. It's all about that kind of uh, putting new information into what we call the prefrontal cortex of mm -hmm. our brain. Um, but emotional learning is different. Um, this is unlearning in a sense of the neural circuitry that we've had habits that we've uh, done over and over and over again that make us um, unconscious of the, some of the things that we react to that are driving your emotions. And therefore it's an unlearning and it takes a lot of intent to change some of those habits that we have that were formed when we were very young. Mm. Is there an example that we can give uh, mm -hmm. our, our viewers in, in a sense of a situation that perhaps, you know, somebody responded with a negative emotional response uh, that led to an outcome that oh. could be financially devastating or mm -hmm. impact someone's career or business unit? Absolutely. I have a good friend and he's a senior executive now for a major airline. And, um, but several years ago, he was in competition for the first really level of um, uh, responsibility that had a lot of people underneath him. And he was competing against a man and a woman for a manager position. Well, the company decided on the woman. Now, unsurprisingly, both men thought, oh, that's not right, you know, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that way. But it was really interesting how they each responded to the negative news. Sure. Now, um, the other gentleman got really mad 
And he made it very apparent that he thought the company was making uh, a bad decision, that he was the preferred person, and he was vocal about it. Now, my friend had the emotional maturity to say, you know, there's no winning um, by making this difficult for anybody. I'm going to work alongside her. I'm going to have the ability to restrain myself in the sense of how I felt this turned out. And so he continued to do his job as well as he could. He actually supported the woman. And a few years later, he was promoted to director. And then a few years later, he was actually promoted over her to another role. Mm. The other gentleman, however, stayed in the supervisory position for the rest of his career. Right. Huge. And resentful. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. affects, I'm sure, not only his outcome, Right, but all the people that that he's influencing. I'm sure the the, exactly. the bitterness. I mean, there's uh, that stuff is it leaks on others. How much does the environment play a role into how we develop emotionally? Well, I think it can be more difficult in really caustic environments. But now um, they there are companies that are becoming so aware of this that they are bringing it in because they know that their environment is highly intense, it's highly competitive, and they've seen great results. Now, a great example in my mind is that the U.S. military is now teaching their officer corps and their higher enlisted um, individuals um, emotional intelligence skill training. Now, think of what they can face. Mm. And, and they're seeing a result of learning the techniques to keep yourself calm in really difficult scenarios and being able to reflect and take control rather than ha be captive to your emotional state. So talk to me a little bit about, I mean, we'll go deeper on this. I know you've put together a wonderful program to really understand the, the research and all the new insights around this topic because it's, I mean, I imagine we're learning new information mm -hmm. as All we go. All the time. I mean, mm -hmm. new case studies, new, new real world examples. And you mentioned technology changing mm -hmm. uh, the way this works. So talk to me about, I mean, it's, there's the obvious industries that have the most financial benefit from doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, the interface in the hospitalities, and when sure. we talked about multifamily, Absolutely. the importance of, of uh, this in multifamily. Talk to me about the industries that have the greatest exposure to risk of this. I mean, I guess you could say it's all, but really mm -hmm. it's customer facing. I would think so. That would be so important because, um, you know, you have that interaction and that customer can decide very quickly if they're going to reuse your service again and again. Um, I was just at a hotel and um, it's a brand new hotel here in Scottsdale, beautiful, but they had an issue, um, as new, new hotels do, right. with my key. And um, I was really um, admired how the person down at the front, when it wouldn't work twice, yeah. how she handled it. She was so um, apologetic and um, offered other things to kind of even things out. And I'm more likely to go back to that hotel now that right. I feel like she heard me. Right. She heard my complaint and she was trying to sincerely do something about it. Mm. But imagine if she'd just kind of blown me off. Right. But, not been the case. So, and customer interactions, we're trained and we know mm -hmm. as leaders that, okay, we have to step up our game. And sometimes in the workplace, it's the customers aren't there, it's, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's the drama that enters, the, those decisions are made that aren't favorable to people and, and they impact people's lives. I mean, mm -hmm. people are asked to travel when they mm -hmm. don't want to travel. There's, right. there's decisions that they don't feel that they have control over. Uh, are there some skills or techniques in those scenarios, like you mentioned, when they don't go right, do you pause? Like, mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the approach you take to, you know, first learn and discover yourself as, you know, on the journey of becoming more and more emotionally intelligent? Well, the first step in all of this is to become aware of those emotions because most of us operate totally unconscious of how those emotions are impacting us. And because we do that, we miss out on being able to read the emotions of the people around us because we're held captive a bit to our emotions. Mm -hmm. So one of the fundamental techniques that you learn in emotional intelligence training is to name the emotion in the moment. And what it happens is, is that it's no longer subconscious then. So I'm upset here or I'm angry or... Right. You want to be specific about it. And now I've, I've heard, mm -hmm. you know, you're delivering information to somebody mm -hmm. and the moment they hear a negative 
you know, this is going to impact me mm -hmm. or in some way, mm -hmm. they start gathering a, their own response, right? Like they're right. already thinking about, so they're not even hearing sometimes the whole message. They're already thinking about right. uh, because the emotions are, are boiling up, right? Exactly. And that's why an emotionally mature person, when they're having a conversation with somebody, they will recognize not just what they said, but the emotion underneath what they said. Mm. And Dr. Stephen Covey, um, he said it really well that when you hear someone's emotion under what they're saying, it's like giving them psychological air. Mm. So if you only hear the context and the words, but not the emotion behind it, what you're basically doing is kind of acknowledging them, but you're not really understanding them. And that can be very dangerous. And particularly leaders, when they deliver bad, inf bad news or difficult uh, discussions, they better understand what that other person is feeling in the moment or they're going to lose all credibility. Mm. That's why this is such an important skill. Yeah. And, and uh, as organizations develop, we, um, we become focused on the transaction. I mean, we all mm -hmm. say it's mm -hmm. part of the people business, right? Mm -hmm. But um, we don't spend enough time, uh, you know, going deep and learning these things. I, I, mm -hmm. I have to imagine if you get this stuff right, you can walk into many situations and start making an impact. Yes. I, mean, I know in the book you talked about how you did it yes. in a very challenging environment. So right. this right. stuff works. It really does. It really does. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts you want to share around the book and, and perhaps what you're talking about in the program? Okay. Well, my book is, um, I've learned a long time ago, I've been in leadership development for many years, that people will remember leadership tenants when they're put in a story. Mm. So my book is a series of stories okay. that then can be translated into leadership lessons that anybody can apply. You don't have to go to the venerable institution of the United States Military Academy to learn some right. of these leadership tenants. And then in terms of my emotional intelligence training, I've always been um, curious of what made some people seem to survive and thrive in really difficult scenarios and that got me interested in emotional intelligence. And so I want to equip people with the skills so that they can navigate difficult situations because 90% of the time the things that derail people in their careers have to do with emotional intelligence skills. Yeah. So why not focus on something that will um, meet a lot of needs, um, particularly for those that are in leadership. I'm very excited about this opportunity. Yeah, and the program you've put together is impressive. Uh, it's it's a deep dive in this mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, what are the benefits of going through the program? I mean, I know you talked a little bit about it now, mm -hmm. but like the the types of modules you've put together really go deep on this stuff. I mean, you're extracting this journey you've been on to mm -hmm. discover mm -hmm. and share. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about um, some of the takeaways from the course. Well, I think um, one takeaway is is that you'll have a a real vocabulary to speak about when it comes to emotional intelligence. In addition, you'll learn insights from the leading experts in the field that I have culminated and put into um, an easy to understand um, series of modules. And also, they're not that long. Um, I think we, in our very busy world, we want information, but we want it in smaller bites. And mm. I've done it in such a way that I think one leads on the other and you'll build on your knowledge. And also, I give you a framework on how to go about developing your own emotional intelligence. Um, and then I give you a whole series of ideas of how you, um, particularly as a leader, can obtain three types of focus. Uh, an emotionally intelligent leader must have a certain type of focus. And this is new information that Daniel Goleman himself has certain, recently published. And I want to share that with you because we stay distracted too much of the time. And so I want to equip leaders in particular with the ability to really focus in three main areas. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be talking more with Sarah in her upcoming course. We'll see you soon. If you found this clip useful, please remember to like and subscribe for more. You can also visit us at multifamilystudios.com to view full episodes of our latest and greatest shows and interviews.